Egun on eta ongi torri. Good morning and welcome to MOVE 2017. Para inaugurar la conferencia, tengo el honor de presentarles a Don Manu Ayerdi, vicepresidente de Desarrollo Económico del Gobierno de Navarra. Muy buenos días a todos y a todas. Nagore Espinosa, CEO of Inchu Destination, Antonio Massier, Chairman of Inroot, here, yes. Marcio Favilla, Director Ex for Operation, Executive Director for Operational Programs and Institutional Relations at the United Nations World Tourism Organization. Maitena Escutari, Directora General, General Director of Tourism and Commerce, Government of Navarre. Ladies, gentlemen, good morning and of course, welcome to Navarre. First of all, I'd like to say that it is a great pleasure for me to welcome you all here in Pamplona, the capital of Navarre. A special thanks to everyone who helped and contributed to making this conference a fabulous success. It is a big honor for Navarre to organize the fifth international conference of the subnational measurement and economic analy analysis of tourism during the next three days in order to discuss current trends in sustainable tourism in urban and rural destinations. You will have the chance of listening, exploring, meeting, networking, and getting to know how to better measure, hence manage a rapidly evolving tourism sector. That's why I'd like to express my gratitude to you all for having come to Navarre to share your experiences. Let me tell you about a few key facts of Navarre. Navarra covers 10,391 square kilometers and has a population of almost 650,000 inhabitants. Half of the population is concentrated here in the capital, Pamplona and surroundings. Navarra is a small region within Spain but it is one of the most economically advanced. Navarra ranks in top positions in all na national indicators of economic development, innovation, education, quality of life, etc. Furthermore, Navarra benefits from some economic autonomy and has its own taxation tax system and its own legal system in many areas. This is because Navarra has been an independent kingdom for almost a thousand years and has retained many of its ancient laws si since the 16th century. Navarra is one of the Spanish regions with the best national indicators in terms also of social welfare, access to services and a standard of living. Capital city Pamplona ranks first as preferred Spanish city to live in. With a Gini index of 28 and a an Human Development Index of 0.97, Navarra is one of the regions with the highest standard of, li of living worldwide. It has a well-developed road network. It is located on the frontier with France to the north, and it is crossed by several motorways that afford easy access with the rest of Spain and Europe. Particularly important is the crossing of two major Spanish access, north-south, linking Paris to, Paris to Madrid, and east-west, linking Bilbao and Barcelona. There are five daily flights to Madrid airport from Pamplona, with flight times of less than an hour to connect with major international destinations, and from November the 6th, yesterday, more or less, Lufthansa flies from Pamplona to Frankfurt with many connections, of course, to rest of Europe and all the world. Driving more or less an hour, a bit of uh, more than an hour, I would say, there is the airport of Biarritz also connecting to Paris and London. By train, the high speed Albia train, Al Albia train links Pamplona to Madrid in three hours and um, to Barcelona also in four hours. GDP per capita of Navarra is one of the highest in Spain. Last year, 2016, nearly 30,000 euros per capita. Also, we maintain a higher standard and poor credit rating than Spain as a whole. This is a bit curious, but it's like, like, like that. Our population has one of the highest level of education also in Spain. 
According to European data, Navarra is, ra is ranked 19 out of 271 European regions with the most highly qualified personnel in science and technology, and the first one in Spain. We have one of the lowest unemployment rate in Spain, with a rate of 10.5% by the end of October, in contrast to the national average of 16.4%. <coughs> Navarra is, in, finally, the Spanish region where industry accounts for the highest percentage of its regional GDP. Our economic structure presents a remarkable specialization in the industrial sector. Proof of this is the significant weight involving goods and automotive industry in our economy. In this regard, I need to emphasize that last year we, launch, we launched the new Smart Specialization Strategy of Navarra. Smart Specialization Strategies are integrated seat-based economic transformation agendas that focus policy support and investments on key regional priorities, challenges and needs for knowledge-based development. In order to do so, the strategy requires a shared vision of the future to be reached and the identification of thematic priorities that include economic, scientific and technological potential and global competitiveness of the territory and of its stakeholders, especially in this case, companies. Finally, the strategy pushes, pushes the use of smart policies focusing on these priorities to maximize the potential for regional development to progress towards a knowledge-based economy. Navarra focuses in six economic areas, automotive and mechatronics, food chain, renewable energy, health, creative and digital industries, and also, but not less important, tourism. These smart specialization strategies develop a vision for the future. The vision of Navarra 2030 is as follows. We are committed to a social and territorial cohesion in Navarra, open and interconnected, made up of creative and entrepreneurial people engaged in a modern and competitive economy. An economy that should stand out for its industrial strength, its commitment to the environment, health and quality of life, based on transparency and trust in order to become a benchmark for sustainable development. This is our vision. Although tourism is not an, ind an industrial or a sports sector in the strict sense of the term, it provides benefits in terms of territorial cohesion and social development and brings about the entry of stereo resources that improve also the regional trade balance. This, uh, this sector is notable for being one of the most important of many regions and is linked to indir indirect benefits of conservation of the natural and cultural heritage. Therefore, in tourism, our aim is to promote Navarre as a unique destination, committed to integrated tourism based on its natural, cultural, gastronomic and social strengths to make it a motor for balanced territorial development an international opening of the region. All the lines of action are in our strategic tourism plan for Navarra 2017-2025, but I am not going to go far in this plan, into this plan because Maitena Escutari, our general manager director, is going to develop it. But I need to add that Navarra saw an increase in the number of tourists as well as daily revenue and average stay per tourist, which is a trend that may well continue and increase in the future. With the purpose of making only a positive impact on the environment, society and economy. So we have to develop our indicators for sustainable tourism. And we are working on the, de on the development of it indicators to measure the movement of the tourism product at our regional level towards a position of greater or lesser sustainability. New technologies offer us a lot of analytic tools for the measurement of sustainable tourism. So we are really, really interested in your experiences and we are, uh, we are uh, follow them with a lot of interest. I hope that all of us get the most of the conference. Finally, I won't be long. I know you are here to work, not to hear me. The program is full. You have a heavy agenda for the following days, but I really hope you had a chance to enjoy also our land. 
Navarra is a land with a very interesting cultural patrimony and an intriguing landscape variety. You are in Pamplona. Visit Pamplona, our millenary, medieval, modern, and green capital. So let me recommend you Navarra as a place to enjoy, to enjoy our delicious gastronomy, a perfect harmony between tradition and modernity. Navarra is the Spanish region with the most varied landscapes. Its products with 15 quality certifications ensure the very best raw materials. Gastronomy tasting is like, like, like the land, filled with contrasting notes that enhance its value even further. A visit to the city is not complete without a trip to the old part of town to try its pinchos, genuine delights of what we seen in miniature. Of course, with a, with a wine of Navarre. In Navarra, and due to its proximity to La Rioja, the vine, our wine, has two destinations of origin, Navarra and Rioja. Enjoy, in moderation, of course. I do hope you enjoy your stay in Navarra, and, and thank you very much again for your visit. I'm sure that it will be highly produ productive for you all. Thank you very much. Muchas gracias. Es que ricasco. Muchas gracias, vicepresidente. Ahora, a continuación, para darles la bienvenida, contamos con la presencia de doña Maitena Ezcutari, directora general de Turismo y Comercio de Gobierno de Navarra, con don Marcio Favila, director ejecutivo de Programas Operativos y Relaciones Internacionales de la Organización Mundial del Turismo de Naciones Unidas, con don Antonio Masieu, presidente de INRAU, y con Agor Espinosa, CEO de Into Destination. Well, ladies and gentlemen, um, thank you so much for you making the time in your hectic agendas to attend MOVE 2017. Uh, dear Mr. Ayerde and Mrs. Scutari, thank you so much for making this fifth edition of MOVE 2017 possible. Um, thank you for your team for entrusting us um, the designing of the agenda and leading the scientific committee. We'll be looking forward to receive your feedback <laughs> once these three days have gone by. Uh, we are delighted to be here in, in Navarra, not only because it brings me childhood memories, but also because um, this, as you just heard, this is a territory very much um, engaged with um, sustainable tourism, but a sustainable tourism that is also based on data. And we are very compromised with that, and we were happy to contribute our tiny bit, and we hope we keep um, collaborating in, in that sense. Um, thank you, um, Mr. Fabula. Thank you very much to you personally and, and your team uh, for participating in this um, fifth edition in, in the events of that in route steers. It's, um, I know it's a very difficult year for your organization. It's the International Year of Tourism for Development, so it's not the best of years in terms of agenda. So we are honored that uh, you're so committed um, to us. Thank you to all the speakers, uh, because I know your agenda is also difficult, and you choose very, um, well, it takes a lot of time to make the decision on what kind of events you attend to every year, and it's great that you choose us among the few that you attend. Um, we really hope that um, you're really uh, ready to share your knowledge, okay, to engage in enriching discussions with all of us so that we all learn. Um, heartfelt gratitude to Into Destination team, to Carlota, Unai, and Juana. Thank you so much. <laughs> There's been a lot of work. Uh, I know we're not done, but I hope you enjoy it during these days as well. And well, um, I hope that we are all ready to listen, constructively discuss, um, contribute and learn, because I would like this conference also, I know this is the fifth edition, so there needs to be kind of a call to action, so to speak, so that uh, we exit those doors uh, by Friday, having kind of a clear mind on what are we supposed to be doing um, so that measuring tourism at the subnational level is taken seriously and we have a clear idea what are we supposed to be doing different um, in terms of not only those that measure and research, but also that those in the tourism sector that are every day working on it so that we work together better. And um, 
that we have kind of a clear idea of which are the right paths. Of course, it means investment from the public and private side, but we feel committed to it. And we start following the right path in terms of the only path that is possible, which is sustainable tourism. And as um, Anna Gerda was saying, uh, many of us, we are visitors here. So as the UN TIO campaign says, travel, enjoy, respect, then enjoy and respect <laughs> Pamplona and Navarra and hope you have a great time, not only exploring Pamplona, but also perhaps you have the time to spend the weekend over here and enjoy some of what Navarra has to offer. And um, don't forget to share it, to share your memorable experience with your friends, family, and online as well, okay? Be ambassadors of Navarra. Thank you so much. Hola, buenos días a todos. Y aparte de que creo que no se trata de repetir todos los agradecimientos que Nagore ha expresado, que yo creo que tengo que hacer los míos porque además estamos muy agradecidos al Gobierno de Navarra por esta oportunidad, pero también agradecerles a ustedes el que estén aquí. Yo creo que lo que pretendemos en estos días, y se lo quiero decir en español, después me oirán hablar en inglés porque... En algunos temas me siento más cómodo hablando en inglés. Pero lo que pretendemos hacer en estos días es conseguir algo que es bien complicado. Y es cómo mover la agenda de esta pequeña organización, organización privada sin fin de lucro, que se llama INRUT, creada con el apoyo de la OMT y de miembros afiliados de la OMT, cómo hacer posible que toda una reflexión que hemos hecho un grupo de personas, muchos de los cuales están aquí sentados, y a los que quiero expresar mi agradecimiento más sincero y profundo, cómo avanzar en poder imaginar recomendaciones internacionales útiles para la medición del turismo a niveles subnacionales. Es una cosa de la que se habla poco, yo creo que todo el mundo da por supuesto que el turismo es un fenómeno básicamente subnacional y que a qué viene, por tanto, el decir, el insistir que la medición del turismo a estos niveles subnacionales es tan complicado cuando no todo el mundo se plantea hasta qué punto tiene calidad, tiene rigor la medición del turismo con los instrumentos que estamos utilizando, habitualmente encuestas de pernoctaciones hoteleras, hasta qué punto eso no es suficiente para poder diseñar políticas potentes de desarrollo turístico o simplemente para una eficiente gestión de las políticas actuales en turismo. Yo creo que esta conferencia es una gran oportunidad y sí el gran agradecimiento al Gobierno de Navarra por hacerla posible. Navarra está en una situación muy curiosa en este momento del tiempo. El esfuerzo de haber diseñado, como ha comentado el viceconsejero, el esfuerzo que se ha hecho para diseñar un plan de desarrollo turístico a medio plazo es una oportunidad de oro para aprender muchas cosas. ¿Cómo lo quiere hacer el Gobierno de Navarra? ¿Con qué instrumentos cuenta? ¿Cuál es la relación entre turismo y territorio en aspectos concretos de desarrollo económico? ¿Cómo medir todo eso? Y sobre todo, ¿qué es lo que habría que medir para que el Gobierno de Navarra pueda salir exitoso de este empeño? Esta conferencia nos va a marcar, es nuestra aspiración y es nuestro objetivo, nos va a marcar iniciativas a poder explorar en el próximo futuro desarrollos metodológicos y de medición que pueden ayudar a medir este esfuerzo que quiere iniciar Navarra y por todo ello la gratitud al gobierno de Navarra, a ustedes por estar aquí y de verdad no diría que es una conferencia más de las que hemos organizado, no es una conferencia al uso, aunque lo parezca, queremos extraer reflexiones, sugerencias, puestas en comunicación, por así decir, de preocupaciones que se puedan tener tanto desde Navarra como desde otras partes 
en hacer posible que la OMT sea capaz en algún momento de poder generar recomendaciones internacionales de aplicación mundial para abordar con seriedad, con rigor, la medición de un sector de actividad económica que no se nos escapa ninguno, que es crucial en muchos destinos. Nada más y gracias a ustedes y al Gobierno de Navarra también. Gracias. Good morning, Sra. Maitena Escutari, Directora de Turismo do Governo de Navarra, Sr. Antonio Macier, gran amigo, Presidente de Inroot, e Sra. Nagora Espinosa, CEO de Into Destination. Distinguished uh, panelists, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'm very, very pleased to be here with you today at the kind invitation of Inroot and the Government of Navarra for the fifth edition of the International Conference on Subnational Measurement and Economic Analysis of Tourism in the beautiful, really beautiful city of Pamplona. Thank you very, very much for your warm hospitality. As you know, last year, one uh, billion and 235 million travelers crossed international borders. This means that one in every six people of the world is making an international trip for leisure, visiting friends or relatives, or for business purposes, thus benefiting economies and societies globally. By 2030, these 1.2 billion arrivals will become 1.8 billion international arrivals, besides the many, many more billion domestic tourism trips that already take place every year. With such an impressive trajectory, tourism has become the third most important item in the global trade of goods and services, only after oil and chemicals and more than automobile, automobile products and food products. And it also has become a very relevant instrument for governments around the world to address their growth and development challenges. Tourism can indeed be a powerful force for sustained and resilient development, only if well-planned and managed. Indeed, those significant arrival figures I have just mentioned translate into an enormous responsibility for all tourism stakeholders regarding the use of natural resources, regarding host communities and their cultural assets, as well as the economic sustainability of companies and destinations. Dear friends, in order to be sure that we are on the right track towards a sustainable development of tourism destinations and businesses, and able to influence consumers' behavior, we need to rely on an accurate assessment of the impact of our sector on the economy, jobs, and the environment. What we cannot measure accurately and regularly, we won't succeed to, me, to manage. We need to measure our impact if we want to effectively and efficiently face some of the most pressing challenges of nowadays, such as climate change, seasonality, carrying capacity, congestion management, as well as the potential negative impact on the social fabric that tourism may bring about. As we all know, the achievement of the targets of the 17 Sustainable Development Goals must be measured by statistically based indicators. And UNWTO is custodian of three indicators, those related to tourism in SDG 8 and SDG 12, which are about economic growth, the creation of decent jobs, and sustainable consumption and production patterns. Sound measurement will only be possible if we use the right frameworks. The UNWTO International Recommendations on Tourism Statistics and the Tourism Satellite Account have an economic focus, as you know. 
This is why UNWTO has recently launched, with the support of the UN Statistics Division, the presence with the presence of many of you, the initiative we call towards a statistical framework for measuring sustainable tourism, which we hope to present by 2020. This new framework draws from the existing frameworks, including the standards of economic environmental accounting, and should also be able to shelter the tremendous challenges and possibilities opened up by technological advancements and big data. UNWTO indeed considers in route a relevant partner in the path towards measuring sustainability, particularly at the subnational level. We have recently renewed, and I'm very happy for that, we have recently renewed our memorandum of understanding in order to keep collaborating towards spreading the message across the world so that many more territories at subnational levels start measuring their progress and drawbacks in sustainable tourism development so that well-founded and advised decisions can be taken. I take the opportunity to thank all of you who have joined the effort of Inroot to contribute uh, with our work at UNWTO. This year, MOVE 2017 addresses not only urban, but also rural tourism. And this is a critical issue for our sector. Again, if well planned and managed, tourism can help distribute economic development beyond urban areas, and at the same time, contribute to raise visitors' awareness of delightful gastronomic experiences, singular cultural identities, breathtaking natural scenery, just as what Nevada has to offer to its residents and visitors. Let's do what uh, uh, the counselor, the vice president of economic uh, development has advised us to go out, meet the people, enjoy the food, taste and enjoy the wine moderately, but intensively, right? <laughs> I'm very pleased to be in Pamplona, not only for the MOVE 2017 conference, but also because UNWTO and the government of Nevada are working on an agreement to strengthen tourism development in this comunidad, help generate more jobs and foster sustainable tourism. Dear friends, we are approaching the end of the International Year of Sustainable Tourism for Development. A great year for us. As you may know, the first time and last time there was an International Year of Tourism was in 1967, 50 years ago. 50 years ago. In 2002, we had the International Year of Ecotourism. But an International Year of Tourism overall, as declared by the UN, was 50 years ago, so it does not happen every year. I hope to be around next time we have an international year again, of course, but we have done a lot, we have tried to do a lot this year uh, in order to bring the message and the challenge of uh, sustainable tourism. Uh, our challenge, I think, of all tourism stakeholders is to make this year uh, a platform towards 2030, along with the uh, 2030 agenda and the SDGs. Let's not consider that international year finishes with the Gregorian calendar on the 31st of December, but let's use this opportunity to continue working with it. At UNWTO, we are uh, uh, doing lots of activities, but also uh, we, are, we have embarked in research on uh, the different objectives, different aspects of the international year in which, uh, we, are going, which we are going to be uh, publishing uh, in the months to come. Uh, I would also like to mention to you that uh, if you go into our website in the part of the international year, you can register all your initiatives related to the objectives of the international year there. So far, uh, we have, well, until last Friday, 
we had uh, 642 different initiatives, uh, events, research, activities, uh, capacity building, uh, projects. So if you have done anything this year, or you are going to do, you, are, you have started something that can be related to the objectives of the International Year, please uh, register that in our website because uh, we want to inform that to the UN General Assembly uh, in our report uh, next year. So as we are approaching the end of this International Year, um, according to the calendar, the message and actions geared towards improving sustainability uh, in all its dimensions will certainly go beyond uh, December thir uh, 31st. During this year at UNWTO, we have been building capacity, raising awareness, fostering knowledge, and enhancing effectiveness of tourism's role in five critical areas of sustainable development. One is inclusive and sustainable economic growth. Two, social inclusiveness, employment, and poverty reduction. Three, resource efficiency, environmental protection, and climate change. Four, cultural values, diversity, and heritage. And five, mutual understanding, peace, and security. The International Year established a global commitment to the sustainable growth of our sector worldwide, and most importantly, its contribution to address the common challenges and policy imperatives set forth in the 2030 Global Development Agenda to benefit to the benefit of the people and of our planet. So I'm looking forward to following up uh, your discussions today and the conclusions uh, that you bring in the days to come. So thank you very much. Have a good work here. Enjoy Pamplona. Enjoy Navarra. Muchísimas gracias. Good morning, Egunon, Ustioi, compañeros, coorganizadores de la Conferencia Internacional MUF 2017, muy buenos días a todos y a todas. Para empezar, quiero agradecer todo, a todos los que habéis hecho posible esta conferencia tan motivadora y tan interesante para Navarra en este momento. ¿no? Gracias a los ponentes por aportar eh, la experiencia y el conocimiento. Y gracias, por supuesto, a todos los que habéis asistido, que estáis interesados en este objetivo común, que es crear conciencia sobre la relevancia de medir el impacto del turismo en los destinos, en los distintos destinos, y ver cómo realmente son gestionados de manera sostenible. ¿no? Todos sabemos que a nivel subnacional es una medición compleja, particularmente, y del rigor en la obtención de estos datos depende la planificación que hagamos acorde a estos criterios de desarrollo sostenible. En esa gestión inteligente que tanto comentamos, inclusiva y de la, de la cual eh, Navarra quiere, quiere ser referente. Voy a ser muy breve, pero para enfocar eh, lo, que, lo que estamos haciendo desde el, desde el sector turístico navarro, sí que debemos recordar unos pocos datos. Eh, realmente Navarra sigue una línea de crecimiento al alza respecto a los ejercicios anteriores, con datos muy positivos. Demuestran que el turismo es una actividad económica esencial para Navarra, que tiene gran potencial de desarrollo y crecimiento. Y es verdad que en muchas comarcas de nuestro territorio el turismo es el sector económico de mayor relevancia. Pero, sin embargo, Dicho eso, tiene mucho margen de crecimiento todavía, lo cual es muy interesante. Y de manera muy concreta, atendiéndonos a, a los datos del 2016, eh, diremos que te, tuvimos un 8% más de visitantes, superando los mejores datos que había habido hasta la fecha, en términos de ingresos diarios un 9,5% más. Es un mercado, eso sí, que prevalece el turismo de proximidad, y de estancias cortas. Eh, estos buenos datos, sin duda, 
eh, sabemos que se pueden mejorar y esto es lo que marca el nuevo plan estratégico de turismo 2017-2025. De alguna forma, eh, bueno, quiero recordar que la gran novedad y el avance para este sector es eh, lo que hemos eh, definido y bien comentado ya por el vicepresidente, eh, que se convierte en un sector estratégico para Navarra. No me voy a extender, pero sí decir que esa apuesta, desde el convencimiento de las posibilidades que tiene nuestro territorio y que somos conscientes de esa capacidad de, de que la actividad turística puede fijar a la población en las distintas comarcas y favorecer también la cohesión territorial tan importante. O sea que realmente este sector tiene una gran relevancia en Navarra por el potencial que comentamos, ¿no? Eh, todo ello, sin duda, con ese punto de vista de sostenibilidad y a partir de ahí hay que destacar que el cambio que se introduce en el plan estratégico es fundamentalmente un cambio en la estructura productiva, en la estructura y en la comercialización hacia la internacionalización. Ese es el gran salto que, de alguna manera, el gran reto que nos marca este plan estratégico. Esa apuesta por la internacionalización que será compatible con el mantenimiento también de esa posición consolidada en los mercados de proximidad. Y eh, se trata de configurar, por tanto, una opción diferenciada, reconocible en la decisión de compra por parte de los consumidores extranjeros, que debemos de diversificar ese área de influencia turística de Pamplona y dar a conocer a los turistas estas nuevas zonas que tenemos también en el territorio. Trabajar, por tanto, los segmentos en los que los destinos navarros están afianzados y buscar posiciones en nuevos nichos. O sea, lo que de alguna forma nos indica el plan también es que a través de la cooperación público-privada podemos desarrollar nuevos productos, productos de la industria del viaje, eh, relacionados con salud, con negocios, con formación especializada, con las famosas escapadas que tenemos eh, margen de crecimiento. Y en este sentido, por supuesto, destacar que naturaleza, cultura y paisaje proporcionan los atractivos eh, estratégicos de, del turismo, eh, que tenemos elementos de identidad territorial muy potentes que aportan esa diversidad y esa singularidad, eh, que son los ingredientes que ya se han definido en, en la visión de la S3, de la, de la Estrategia del Turismo Navarra, y eh, lo que nos queda es centrar la competitividad turística en esa diferenciación de segmentos de productos en el marco del destino, apoyándonos en el patrimonio territorial y en las personas, que son fundamentales para que esa sostenibilidad realmente sea eh, realmente un objetivo alcanzable. ¿no? Y en definitiva, bueno, mañana tendré oportunidad de presentar con más detalle esta estrategia turística. Eh, bueno, simplemente eh, decir que en este caso nos parece imprescindible contribuir a la rentabilidad de la actividad y la creación del empleo, pero manteniendo, eso sí, muy presente, respetar la calidad de vida de los residentes y habitantes de Navarra. Muchas gracias, es que ricasco, thank you y que disfrutéis de la estancia.